With the cost of living on the rise just about everywhere, even more people than even in the past are looking for a new place to call home, a place where they might even be able to get by with a lower cost of living. Or many are also looking for places that may have opportunities that might not be available to them at home. There will never be that one perfect place for everybody, but if we're talking about Europe, then here are some of my thoughts. I'm Rafael Di Furia, back at it again for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter, and roll that intro. As I mentioned recently in episode 347, that the cost of living is on the rise here in Portugal to a point where I have a difficult time still being able to continue to recommend it. For many years, it was a wonderful place to think of as a low cost option. Yes, clearly it will still be lower cost than many places around the world, but as I mentioned in that episode also, there are certain prices in the main cities here that you are seeing starting to match some of the prices that would have normally have been much more expensive. One of the biggest considerations for those who are considering the idea of living in Portugal is that Portugal is one of the countries in the European Union that has one of the fastest paths to citizenship. It might not be lightning fast, but after about five years of residency to become eligible for citizenship, I would say that is definitely a major factor to consider if Portuguese citizenship is the right choice for you, because, of course, living in Portugal has to be the right choice for you. So for those who could find that Portugal would be able to offer what they are looking for and to be able to fully take advantage and integrate, then it is a wonderful place that you can enjoy. But like many other countries around Europe, for those who are earning their money through social security or some sort of pension, pensions can be taxed in this country. And again, though, it's not just Portugal that's this way. But for those who are looking for a fast path to citizenship but aren't quite thinking that Portugal would be the right choice for them, then another country that might be worth thinking about would be Belgium. Belgium is another country with a very similar timeline for citizenship to Portugal. But, of course, the cost of living there, generally speaking, has been much higher. But if we're comparing, like I said, to some of the biggest cities here in Portugal, with the cost of living rising, then we are also talking about prices that are getting very close to what you would find here in Portugal in some instances, maybe even lower. There might be other factors such as going out to restaurants or going to make certain purchases that would be a little bit more pricey than Portugal. But when we're talking about the cost of living having gone up so much in Portugal, is it really still worth staying here? Like I said, episode 347 of Not Your Average Globe Trotter is where I talked a bit more about this. But for those who are interested in maybe having a more northern European cosmopolitan experience, but would like to have a bit of the kind of essence of a Mediterranean lifestyle or Mediterranean culture, then I would say thinking about northern Italy could be worthwhile. But if you are thinking about southern Italy, I would say that there are parts of Portugal and southern Italy that would maybe compete with one another and offer some of the same things. Not the exact same, but there are some similarities in the lifestyle. But in northern Portugal, I think it offers a really interesting of the Italian way of life, but also having a bit of hustle and bustle around you. But it depends on what you're looking for, if you're looking for a life out in the country or if you're looking for a life in the city. But because I've spoken so much about Italy on some of the earlier episodes of Not Your Average Globetrotter, I'm just going to recommend that you go and search through some of those older episodes for some of my takes on Italy. And just before we get to the next section of this episode, I do want to say a huge thank you to those of you who helped to make these episodes possible through Patreon on a monthly basis, rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon, patreon.com slash rafaeldifuria, as well as the one-time thank you through the thanks button here on YouTube, as well as rafaeldifuria.com slash support. And also a huge thank you to those of you who help share these episodes, like these episodes, and are subscribed to this channel. All of these ways of helping really do help the project to be able to move forward. Truly, it does mean a lot. So thank you all very much. And just to move on, if you are thinking about being geographically in a place where maybe you are wanting to have the European lifestyle, but you're also at a point in your life where working is a necessity and you're wanting to position yourself in a place where you may have more opportunities available and maybe a better income. Of course, then you might start having to look at higher expenditures and higher taxes and various things. But if we're talking about maybe looking for some of those aspects of life, maybe even looking at some parts of the Netherlands or northern Germany or some of the big cities in Germany might be worth considering, or even some places in Scandinavia also can have options that could be really interesting if you're looking for a job in a company and you're looking for a salary that is really stable and on top you happen to be highly qualified. But of course, like I mentioned, there are certain 
expenditures that you will have that could be a little bit higher or look a little different than in this part of the world. For example, in comparison uh, with Italy, the Netherlands has a little bit of a different healthcare system that you do have to account for a little bit differently at the end of the month than you might in Italy. In Italy, your health care is taken out of your social security taxes. You don't pay for anything on top of your annual social security and tax. But in the Netherlands, it is required from as far as I understand, I could be wrong about this, but from what I understand, it is required to take out a health insurance policy. You are required to meet some bare minimum level of services, but you can build on top of that. And of course, some individuals in Italy do decide that getting private healthcare is right for them. But the private healthcare system in Italy, I would say, generally speaking, functions well enough that if you need it, it can be there for you. But in a place like the Netherlands, where you might have to actually pay for that and have different access to different hospitals in different ways, that could be something that I would see as potentially annoying for those maybe living in a location like that. Not to say that the Italian healthcare system is perfect, though. But moving on, there are many people, though, who are looking for a very different experience. They're not looking for some of the normal, popular, normal in air quotes, popular locations that people are normally attracted to or think of when they are thinking about moving to Europe. For example, France, Netherlands, UK, even though they aren't Europe anymore, or at least not EU anymore. <laughs> the Europe part, people do debate that, jokingly, sort of. Or Germany, Italy, Spain. There are many of these locations that are very popular, and they have been for many years because they offer really interesting differences from the American way of life. But there are people who are looking for something that's even a little bit more different than that. And then that would mean maybe it could be worthwhile looking at places like Poland, Czechia, formerly known as the Czech Republic, and Hungary. I mean, I'll admit even for me, at one point, I had seriously considered moving to Budapest. Of course, clearly that never happened, but I was looking for an experience in a country that I had never had anything that would be the same equivalent to what I had experienced anywhere else, that I had never really had so much experience with Eastern Europe or that part of kind of Central Europe, depending on your definition of what is Central Europe, what is Eastern Europe, whatever. There might be some aspects of life that would differ greatly from what you might find in, say, Western or Southern Europe. And some people are just looking for something that is completely different than what many people would experience. And so I would say those are very interesting looking locations. But now with some of the tax incentives that you can find in Europe, some runners up on my list might be Spain and Greece. Actually, I will say Spain is also another place that I had also very seriously considered at one point. I've got some family there and I thought, yeah, it might be nice to be near family. Clearly, that never ended up happening either, even though I actually have been to Spain a bunch of times and actually do enjoy it there. Another country, though, that I've heard some interesting things about, but I have no knowledge or experience with is actually Albania. And based on what I've heard about it, it sounds really interesting and like it could be interesting to check out. Although another place that I would say maybe would be on my runner's up list could be Romania. That would be, though, really also from a cost of living perspective as well. Or a country that you could just put at the top of your list purely based on that it has the highest number of metal bands per capita would be Finland. So if you are into metal, then Finland could be the right place for you. There's maybe only one country in Europe, though, that I don't think I could ever really see myself calling home, and that would be France. I know many people love it, but even if I were promised a lifetime supply of fresh daily croissants that might still not be enough to get me to be interested in living in that part of Europe. It might get pretty close though, but based on my limited experience there, I don't think it would be the right fit for me. Does it maybe have something to do with stereotypes being realized in person and having experienced certain things? Maybe, possibly, but that's not for this episode. Thank you all so much for joining me again for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter, and especially a huge thank you to those of you who helped this project to be able to continue on a monthly basis through patreon.com slash rafaeldifuria, rafaeldifuria.com slash patreon, as well as the thanks button here on YouTube and the one-time support through rafaeldifuria.com slash support. Also, thank you to those of you who do like and share these episodes and are subscribed to this YouTube channel. It all really does help. Of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and I will see you all for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Later. Later.